everybody. Welcome to the final pyjama party of 2020. Viewers at home, I'm sure you can recognize some familiar faces. Uh, less than one familiar face. <laughs> we have Dr. Rumen from, you know, Investing in Relationship Skills. We have Kenneth from Women in IT. We have Caleb from... <laughs> The art of nudity. The art of nudity. <laughs> then we have Rosemary from Cyberbullying. We're expecting two more guests, but um, okay, we'll see how that goes. Um, so guys, how are you? How are you doing? Great. I am great. Yeah, great. <laughs> yes. I am awesome at the moment. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm oh, and I'm great. The holidays have started for me. Nice, nice. Yes, the holidays have started. Doesn't feel like Christmas yet because I'm not going to go to church, bro. Yeah. Doesn't mm. feel like Christmas yet. Just... Mm. There's okay. no Christmas in Nigeria at all. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. For me, we don't we don't take like a Christmas holiday like end, like end of year break. So it's just the day that is public holiday. So for me, I'm just like. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, same here, but we're working from home, so mm -hmm, I mean yeah. speak for yourself, please. You are working from home. Hey, sorry, dear. I'm working from home. <laughs> uh, so some of us are not working from home. Where should but, I go um, to? governor of Lagos State has put Lagos on that kind of lockdown? I saw, I saw that. Only the farm places. Well, well, only the farm yeah. places. <laughs> he said only the go to work. Places. Well, I think that, um, okay. Oh, okay, okay. All the schools and the civil service. Okay. Yeah. So private organizations are still working. Oh, it's not locked down. I'm envious of people in Nigeria at this moment in my life. I wish I was home. Why? No, no, you don't. Yeah, Why would you wish you were in Nigeria? Let, 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 let's, let's know what she's saying. Let's what she's saying now. Why? Why do you? <laughs> Now I hear that they carry COVID for head. Nigeria, as far as I'm concerned, no COVID there. You people are living the life. Now it's now a that, good thing. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, can I say it's a good thing that we are carrying COVID on our head? Now you're saying. No, oh, in Nigeria, right their way. What? Right their way. Okay. <laughs> COVID there, Nigeria. So, we'll never know. People are dying and we don't know why they are dying. Exactly. Well, we don't, we don't be so with COVID. I think the well, I well, I I I think that I, I I want them to carry it on their identity before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I want them to carry it on their identity. I, I mean, I think they carry they carry the wrong parts on their head, which is the bad thing. So they close down all the entertainment centers and the churches and mosques and leave the work to continue in the office. So it really doesn't change anything for the people who are working. Mm. Because people are not taking it seriously. Nobody's taking this thing seriously. Yeah, it's not. Like, the government is not taking it seriously. It just, they expect the citizens to take it seriously. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, and I think that the fact that you know when poverty is like very much and people are already dying, so you're not telling me okay, I should stay at home because of something that I might die when I would have died before. So what's the difference? Let me just go and do my work. I mean, I let me just all die in a die. <laughs> you cannot afford to stay at home. Yeah. Then you That's go what... out. You have to go out and work if you're not afford to stay at home. But some yeah, of other countries, true. they can afford to say, okay, we're going to give um, COVID relief and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Nothing like that is happening in Nigeria. Let's not talk about, about, about our own materials. Let's not talk about our Indomine, please. Let's not talk about our Indomine. <laughs> I don't know why the link was going to do for people, but they didn't even share the Indomine. I mean, it was you would have done something. We shall be Indomine again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can't believe you don't know this. Bye, Kapalana. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so we're going to like do one after the other. So first off, how was your year? If you were going to like describe your year in one word, how was it? So for my screen, we'll start with Kenne. Hmm. My year. How was my year? Um, it was just oh, the, the word for it. Oh, good. Hey, maybe it's hard. 
Should we leave you so that when you when we go around, you remember the word? Just one word you want. Just one word. No, go to another person. I will be thinking okay, of you. Rosemary, how was your year? Okay, so for me, it was unexpected. Everything unexpected. that happened. Mm. Unexpected. Okay. Caleb. I think I'll say my year was unexpected would be the word I would use, but let me say eventful. Eventful. Wow. Was, okay. Yeah, it was, it was quite eventful. Rumen. Um, I would say it, my year needed a lot of recalibration. Mm. Recalibration. Okay. What is that an adjective to describe the year? <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's needed. <laughs> I did not say it, it's the I'm waiting for the one word. <laughs> exactly, I'm waiting for the one word. I don't know. Um, what was the word now? Uh, <laughs> unpredictable. Unpredictable. Okay. Can yeah, I remember can. the word? Mm. It has like, I don't know if my year, my year like gave me a, is this serendip- serendipity? Yeah. Serendipity. Yeah. Seren DPT, something like that. I don't know how they pronounce and bonus. And DPT is also okay. a noun, I think. Yes. Describe what describe what you're trying to say. Like um, I feel like it was this year was a layer of good luck for me. Things oh. that maybe things like because I have to procrastinate. When I procrastinate, like, oh, I want to get this thing, mm. something better comes, like good things that I did not plan for happen to mm. me. Yeah. Wow. Seren DPT. Seren DPT. I think this is hard. I think awesome would have done just as much. Awesome. <laughs> awesome has been used too much. Awesome is now weak. Awesome has lost. <laughs> well, for me, I think I understand what Kenya is saying. Like, in as much as it was a sad thing for the world, personally, I felt like this was one of my best years yet in terms of career, in terms of doing what I want to do, in terms of, you know, learning skills. It was just a very nice year. So, well, maybe the mo- more questions that I ask. Where is the one word now? Deep. I said I agree with. Okay, fine, awesome. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> one word box. You put us in the first place. I just say. Okay, I'm sorry, my year was awesome. <laughs> okay, so this year there were a lot of trends. You know, when people are staying at home, you know, you need a lot of things to do. So, what was your what we say was your worst trend? Like when you just see this trend, just be so irritated and annoyed. <laughs> So what's trend? Let's start with Caleb. Uh, I think I would have to, I think it would be all the, it would be the latest ones. A lot of the early trends irritated me. The ones that didn't have to do with fitness irritated me. Um, Can you name one? I can't remember the early trends. 2020 was like 20 years long. How do you remember all the yeah. trends? <laughs> I remember, the, the, like, literally, I'm thinking trend, and all I'm thinking is this slow mo trend, because that was like the most recent one. I can't think about the other ones anymore. Hmm. There was the um, Don Rush Challenge. There was Bob Daddy or Pop Daddy. Yeah, Bob know. Daddy. <laughs> I think all of them, all of them got very interesting <laughs> after the first like couple of weeks okay so you're saying that your worst trend was the fact that they were trends okay moving on so <laughs> rosemary <laughs> what was your worst trend I, I think my worst trend was bob daddy don't rush because i don't yeah. understand how you make up dress up like five know. different attires to sit down with the house and do video is that how <laughs> jobless we became i, I did not well, understand that actually jobless well, I, I, I love the outcome more. i always love the outcome I cannot relate. How do you do all that <laughs> hard work? Yeah. Just to just to do video and then that's the end. You know, yeah. I it was inside the first lockdown. No, the first no, lockdown no, was very yeah. 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 All right. Kenne, can you think of any worst trend for you? The whole TikTok team. I don't know if you can get So get that. <laughs> One challenge after the other, like, do- doesn't make sense. They will not make sense. No, they will be like, kiss your best friend. I'll be like, are you people that, I don't know if it's teenagers, adults, because I don't, I don't have the app. I don't have the app. 
So it, I don't it, know how it at all. I don't every day the one trend that is coming up that it doesn't make sense. All those K-pop challenge, all oh. those type of fandom. I'm like TikTok should be banned. Sorry, Sorry but it's pretty banned in the US. So, <laughs> so you, you support <laughs> Trump in that? Okay, moving on. Was completely banned. Well, I know that it had been banned. I don't know if they are still appealing for it or whatever. But it's banned in the US. Rumen. Oh, I said my own Bob Daddy and everything. I don't even. Yeah. Then this other was it Cooker Boys or something? Which one was that one? Oh, those those four boys. I mean, five boys that were forming. They are so fine. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> they are good looking boys, no doubt. But what what was that? That's what that is. What, what was that Amy? about? What was that Amy like? <laughs> Okay, so um, what was your best trend? Okay, like there must be something that you'd have liked now in all the trends. No we one can't that, oh, remember that's the trend. We, we can't remember them. That's what I'm saying. Wow, wow. Caleb, you seem like you have something to say. I love, I love the push-up challenges. You know, yeah. so, no, I grew so bored in the first like two weeks. You should have seen me. I was like sexy, but that okay. that ended. <laughs> yeah, so I love I love all the business challenges. You love those business challenges. Mm. Next one, okay. Can I use that was your, your best trend? Thing, all those exercise challenges that will make your abs burn. You will love and hate your abs at the same time. All those fitness challenges, like they were so good. Mm. So yeah. did your abs, did your abs burn though? <laughs> I have some ab lines with fat on it, but they are ab lines too. So another day I will show you. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So, Rumi, you can't remember any any challenge that you liked. I'm not, I don't have TikTok. I never get the challenges until they probably become viral if I see them. Mm, I don't have TikTok either, so most of them were on Instagram. Um, I think my best was probably um, Salam Aleikum. <laughs> <laughs> I like Salam Aleikum. The one that <laughs> like, when something bad is about to happen. Right, so they'll not like be doing the video, just like playing a particular song, and then they'll not just slow the video down, be like, Salam alaikum. Oh, yeah, I think I remember the one I actually like, like those coffee guys, guys. Yeah, I, I yes. love oh, that one. yes, yeah, those funeral guys, they never, they never went old, they never got old, just yeah, never funny never. every single time. You see, S20 had some nice things. Um, Ruben said her best was the coughing, coughing challenge, just coughing guys. I don't know what those people are called, but those <laughs> funeral guys are here. Turn on my video right now. Chill out. In the whole world, like even okay. Asia. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, really no, no. trended worldwide. Yeah. That was really awesome. Oh, I- the poor bearers. Mm. Probably mm. Probably mm. Okay, so we're going to do like personal stuff now. What was your favorite part of the year? Like in everything that happened, what would you say? Okay, thank God this happened. Even you know, in the midst of all the nonsense that was going on, what was your favorite part? Uh, Roman. Um. Okay. So officially, got my PhD officially. Ah! Doctor Roman, so yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Of which the worst part is also the flip side of that because I didn't get to my graduation this year, but oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe so I guess you, you already answered the, the next the next question, or maybe maybe when you are asking that one, you have a, a worst part. Worst part. Anyway, so <laughs> can I hold your best part of the year? There are three top things. Oh, tell us the three top. <laughs> so, um, my brother and I got getting a promotion at work. Wow. Okay. Nice. <laughs> my younger brother uh, completing his master's as the best graduating student. And wow. So I'm like, yay! First class, <laughs> yeah, we win. Yeah. So that was the best part of this year for me. Yes. Okay. So, is that three? Okay, you, your brother gets a promotion, you get a promotion, and your other brother finishing school. Those are three. Okay, wonderful. Rosemary. Okay, so for me, I think that um, 
the whole able to work from home thing gave me opportunity to do the things I wanted to do that had been procrastinating because of work and all of that. So it was it actually allowed me to push myself more. So that was like the best part for me. I was able to I was able to start doing things that I was still delivering work, but yes, I was able to start doing things that I wouldn't have done if I was working from the office because there would have been no time. So yeah. I think that was the best part of the year for me. Nice, nice. Um, Adrian, have you been following us? Do you want to chip in something here? Um, for me, my best part of the year was, uh, I was... Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, okay um, my best part of the year was... Um, the fact that I was able to do my um, induction as a doctor, so uh, wow, congratulations! That was, like, in lockdown. So yeah, so that was my high. That was like the high for me, and also um, the lockdown also gave me an avenue to um, start things that I had been procrastinating with for a while, like starting the podcast. I've mm. always wanted to, so I was able to. Um, take time to self-reflect how I wanted to um, because the podcast to be produced and stuff like that so that was like for me um, even though there even though there, there was um, lockdown during that period I was able to at least reflect so I started reading books and <laughs> so for me those, those were those were just like the highlights for me things I've abandoned in a while I was able to start them again all right thank you kill him Okay, uh, I think for me, it's basically the same thing. The extra time, I can add so much. Adrian, well, it, your, it, it, your audio. Okay. Okay. So it fizzled after a while, uh, but like at the beginning, it gave like so much extra. I think there was just a lot more freedom this year, Sha, because of the the um, pandemic and everything working from home though I worked from home for a very short time but things just kind of freed up and then we having casual to work <laughs> made it, like it was that was that was awesome <laughs> I think those are the, the main things that for me the extra time I did a lot more I completed a lot of works I swelled into different sides of my business and I shall became I became a little bit of a rebel so it's it was actually for that part, that part was actually quite good for me. Yeah. Um, for me, my best part was being able to literally wake up from my bed and go straight to my table to work. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, <laughs> but some days it was needed. <laughs> like, like literally just wake up and sit down at your table and start working. Like that was the best part for me. Um, and that thing was um, just basically seeing how the world can actually survive without seeing each other. Like. Everybody just decided that, you know what, we can't see each other, so we can find better ways of doing things. And I feel like because of 2020, a lot of things in the world that like is going to change. I know my office is already thinking about how they can do more flexible working arrangements. So if you don't really want to go back to the office ever, you can decide to stay at home. And it's really nice. That's my favorite part of 2020. That's the best thing the pandemic ever did for the world. Um, so the next thing is, what was your most shocking event? Like you said, I'm like, no, no way this happened. <laughs> like, no way this happened. Rumors. Well, uh, the fact that Donald Trump lost. <laughs> okay. Oh <my> yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, if I if I if I death, if I eat my world, if I gamble or whatever, I bet that Trump would have won. Mm. It was surprising that he didn't win. It was yeah. really surprising. Um, it, um, yeah. Let's not talk about too much politics, but yeah, it was shocking that he lost. Wow. Of the whole 2020, that's your, the most shocking event. Uh, that's what comes <laughs> to mind right now. That's what just comes to mind right yeah. now. Thank you, Kenne. What was the most shocking event? Hmm. I don't know. How shocking is that? Hey, Jesus Christ. This one had it. Nobody I knew that I did. Okay, um, Caleb. Uh, I think the whole NSAS movement was shocking. 
the Nigerians could come out together like that. And then the very, very sad ending, that was like the shocking, most shocking part of it, that mm. Nigeria could do that to her citizens. But yeah, the whole NSAS thing was quite shocking. Nigeria mm. didn't seem like that kind of place. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so mine is like a follow-up to Caleb Zone. For me, the most shocking thing was that that enters movement did not bring, I mean, it did not bring the change that we wanted. I was very, very sure. Like, I was 100% sure that after all of that movement and, you know, everything that gathered and all that, uh, you know, governments was going to change, things were going to change, <laughs> and everything just died like that. If you had asked me to bet, I'd have told you that I know after people came out like that, I yeah. mean Nigeria stood together, we were going to make a major difference. But seeing that we didn't, um that was it was very, very shocking to me. It shocked me. Yeah. Uh Adrian. Okay, um for me, um sorry to you this is um for me the um, shocking moment for me was the coming to reality that the world was virtually on lockdown. I, I never in my weather's dreams or weather's imagination ever thought that everything. Can you hear me? Yeah. So I never in my widest imagination ever thought that we would come to a time where everybody would be stuck in one place. I think that for me, that was like the greatest shock. Also, um, the entire protest for me as well. Um, the fact that I, I also never um, thought that. Nigerians or Nigerian youth would decide that enough was enough and they would um, protest against the government in that in that manner. Yeah, some might say that there was no result, but I, I don't think that we ever thought that it was going to be like a hundred meter sprint. I always saw it as um, I always saw it as a long distance race. So for me, I, I guess that was like my those were my, my two um, shocking shocking moments of the year. Okay. Can, I, can you think of anything now? Mm, I, my mind is going towards like the whole coronavirus thing. And what is shocking about it for me, not like the fact COVID started, is that the way people are still behaving, despite the whole, like, when they say, okay, lockdown is over for a bit, people still act like they don't care. I'm like, I don't know, that's not maybe it is part of the world, or maybe it's, it's me. Yeah, it's different. But just feel like human beings behavior because people tell me, oh, things will never be the same. I tell them, like, from what I can see, things are even, will even be worse than it was before COVID. Like, how? Because you expect people now to be more careful since mm. the lockdown has been eased, so it will not rise again. Like, when you go out in town, you see people are like, ah, are you guys not? <laughs> like, is it really <laughs> okay? Do you think this thing is like a joke or something? So, the behavior of human beings this year really surprised me with the whole. COVID and the way people are still asking, like, I beg, if you want to kill me, make it kill me. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it was basically all the different protests. So there was the Black Lives Matter protest and the George Floyd incident. That one shocked my core. Not because I did not think that these things were already going on, but the fact that the way it happened, everybody watched the video, so there's no need to rehash that. But that was really shocking for me. Um, the entire protest as well. Then the fact that people were actually protesting the lockdown, that shocked me. Oh, <laughs> like, you. there are people that match. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> the fact that people protested wearing masks, that was that shocked me too. Like, different protests were just shocking. Like, ah. So people can actually protest stuff like this. <laughs> um, I think the last one that also um, really shocked me was the death of Chadwick Boseman. I did not expect that one at all. Mm -hmm. And that one, that one shocked me, Sha. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, okay, so if you are willing to share, can you tell us what, how you made use of your quarantine, like the skill you learned or the project you started, you know, just share if you want to. Uh, quarantine, when we're working from home. Yeah, the lockdown, everything, like what major skill did you, would you say you, um, you attained or whatever <laughs> you learned? Okay, Caleb. Uh, I think the whole quarantine, let's say it didn't really, really touch us as much here, but I would say the extra time from 
the fact that companies had to reduce their the their hold and all that gave me time to I started a number of projects. I started a number of art series and um I'm still starting them. Some of them I'm still starting them. Like I'm still working on them. Uh, prior to that in addition to that, I think I I went into cloth customizing. I, I I started a lot of things, yeah, because of the extra time. Mm. A lot of projects, yeah. Okay. As to skills I learned, I actually did a couple of new certifications. Mm. I was lazy about that, yeah. I, I mean, I, I realized now, looking at all the amount of time that passed, that, man, I could have used it a lot better, I know. Mm. And the whole extra time just gave me a way of, I don't know, um, pushing it in mm. a different way. So I actually got a lot more acceptance and a lot more uh, engagement on that. So, yeah, that was what I did with my quarantine. Okay. Okay. Want to share? Hmm? Okay. Okay. So, um, for me, okay, the major thing, major, major thing was that I was able to start my blog. So it's been something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. And, you know, at nice. some point I started, I stopped. Can you hear me? I don't know if yeah, my yeah. network was Okay, so um, at some point I started and then I stopped for, you know, with the lockdown, I was able to start and I was able to be consistent. I did not know that I could be consistent. So for me, that was like a major, major thing. Of course, I did some courses, certification, applied to schools and, you know, tried to get scholarships and all of that. But, you know, I, I'm actually still very, very glad that, yeah, personally, I could do something that I've always personally wanted to do and I could stick to it and be consistent with it. Nice. Kenneth? Okay, for me, um, for this lockdown, something I learned, like, I was able to study, which is hard at work. Yeah, so I, can, I was able to study, play video games, but during work time, when I was going to the office, there was no time for that. Then oh. I was able to, like, bring up my interest back in fashion designing. I started, oh. like, making sketches, and I was like, oh, my God, you can still draw. <laughs> and I did um, eight days water fast. Mm. That gave me like practice self control. Like, hey, I can so I can stay for eight days without eating. That means there's nothing. I don't understand. Wait, you stayed eight, eight days without eating? Yes, I was drinking only water. Were you praying too? I hope you were praying. <laughs> so, I mean, don't I, just, like, you can't just waste all of that hunger. <laughs> don't waste all of that hunger. <laughs> I think it was one weight loss thing. They're like, oh, I was seeing all the you know, water fast. So I did it for eight days. I was supposed to do it for seven. But after on the eight days, I was like, I'm not hungry. So oh. I it, it was like, if anybody, I tell people, like, how? But now that thing just gave me that motivation. Like, see, if you want to do it, so I'm just like, if I can go for eight days without food, so there's nothing I can't go for. If I mean, yeah. so I can want to start my own fashion line and all that. So, yeah. Nice. About, uh, and if I was in the office, maybe I'll be tempted and all that, but staying at home, being by myself, it really helped me with that. Mm. Yeah. Roman, I'm still in shock from that whole age. <laughs> <laughs> she, can, she can't think of what the old is right now because she's still trying to. <laughs> Let's do it together next year. After Christmas or something. Nah, I don't deprive myself it's of right. anything. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of any yeah. form of deprivation. I believe everything I mean, is I don't, done in I don't moderation. Like food, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> I don't in deprivation. Like, everything should be done in moderation. Decide how much you want to do of something, not just deprive yourself of something. I'm not a fan of deprivation at all. Mm. At all. <laughs> it goes against everything. It. No. Mm. Nah. I think, I think what I respect about it is what you took out of it. So it's not just, oh, okay, I can do water fast, that I can actually overcome anything. Wait, yeah, yeah, the mind, if you put it in your mind to anything, yeah. you can yeah, achieve. The fact that you were able to develop your mind from that physical activity is what I respect. Yeah. 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 So, Rumen. Well, yeah. Um, I started my adult life with Dr. Rumen, right? Which was my attempt at, was it, is it vlogging or whatever I called right now <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not vlogging that's video vlogging blog yeah just, right. yeah so like creating the 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 art sorry Kaluba this is not melody <laughs> art for you but <laughs> creating no, the 
what is what? graphics graphics yes let's call it graphics graphic. let's just call it graphic. art right it's art. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really the same ballpark so it's just like being able to create the graphics um put my writings all the ideas in my head all the things i've been thinking about over the years just to get them out there so that they don't keep being in my head um so yeah it was more for me than anybody else. People don't understand that that thing was actually more for me. Yeah. Because um, it was quite therapeutic for me. Um, so even if the adult life has now hindered the adult life is just a little bit right now, but it is going to come back soon. Yeah, it's going to come back soon. So yeah, it's, it's, it was amazing. I, just, I feel lighter. Mm. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Adrian. Okay. Um, for me, the skills I learned, like I said, the um, lockdown helped me to concentrate on things that I had I had in mind, but I had, had had not had the time to to do them, or I just um, abandoned them. Mm. So um, I started learning. I was on. I was in online courses a lot. I was learning um, audio editing. Um, I learned a bit of um, video editing as well on Coursera. So I was doing some courses over there. Mm. And basically, I was just basically doing research on how to um, start a podcast, basically. So that was basically what I was doing. And I I started, um, I went back, to, I started reading again, like reading books that are not medically inclined, kind of. Mm. Just um, um, books on productivity. I think that was, for me, that was like the, I read. I really read a lot. That was like the highlight for me. So basically, reading and online courses for me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, for me, well, I started my YouTube channel, so that was great. Um, and I learned a lot of video editing and graphic design, even if it's still like the novice level. But it was my mind was open to a new world of editing, and then um. I think I learned time management because most people think that um, when you are when you don't have time and you do stuff, you have done something great. Try not having like having a whole day to yourself and actually appropriating the time and saying, okay, I must do something. I feel like that's the hardest thing to do in this life. <laughs> like knowing that I have this whole day to myself, what am I going to produce out of it? So I was able to do that a lot this um, lockdown, being able to manage my time and you know, produce stuff out of it. So that was the major thing. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, sorry, I'm going to... I just remember something else. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, even if I've been doing this little by little, but I think this year, last lockdown, the second lockdown, I rekindled my interest in investing. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'd say all the time being dormant, going back to investing is, is, is paying off. We're talking about money, right? Not just <laughs> like investing relationship skills. I don't know, investing in stocks. Monetary assets. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I'll come and meet people's skills are big. Next year, I want to start investing in stocks. So please, you are the woman for the job. Please, Thank do pyjama party for us, eh? Do give away. <laughs> so give away what? You can learn, <laughs> you can learn how to invest in stocks. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, th those are all the questions I have for today. Yeah, so the final thing, basically, I personally do not like um, New Year resolutions because, you know, but <laughs> um, what would you say your hopes are for next year? Just generally, what are your hopes for next year? I will start. Um, 2021, I hope that the, the pandemic does not like, I, I hope that the effect starts to go down drastically and things can start returning back to normal, but not 100% normal. I hope that <laughs> we can also still learn that we can work from home. Nobody's going to die if you don't go to the office. So yeah, those are my major hopes. Then personally, one of my major hopes is that I'm able to achieve all the things I want to achieve. Like at the beginning of 2020, I, there were a lot of things that said, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Funny enough, I deviated from all those things and did a whole different set of things because of the way the year turned out. But 
2021 other dreams and hopes that I want to also achieve. So hopefully that works out. Um, Rumen. Yeah, for 2021, right? I think it's just people putting value on the right things to so reprioritization, basically, because before 20, before the COVID hit, before everything changed, the things that we thought were important are not as important now, if you come to think about it. Yeah. So uh, putting more emphasis on relationships, yeah, on exactly. those networks yeah, exactly. and contacts and everything, that's what's most important. Then I just hope that Nigeria, Nigeria, we can just have a, a goal, like Nigerians rather, Nigerians, we make Nigeria, have a goal, rally around this, be unified and start to bring about the change and improvement that we want to see, first from our lives and then from the wider society. Because the way Nigeria is going, it is just a ticking time bomb. It cannot continue going the way it's going. It is not sustainable. I mean, who's up well? I don't sound like a, a what's it called now, doomsday or whatever. I'm surprised that Nigeria has survived to, to this time because of the way it's going, it is not sustainable. We have to change course. We just have to change course. So I'm just hoping that Nigeria can, Nigerians can unify and help bring in the change that we want. We cannot keep sitting at the back, or even the back to the in the boot of the car. We are, in the in the of the car. <laughs> we are in the boot of the car and we're clamoring for this, but we have to take a more active role. So I'm just hoping that I don't want to be in a case where you want to go back to Nigeria and you're, you're afraid. Like, mm. imagine going back, you want to go to Nigeria. Nigeria is a lovely place. There are places in the north, for example, that I would love to visit, but I can't even think about going there because of how the security is. So that's not, that's, no. So I'm hoping, yeah. Kill him. Okay, uh, for me, I think this year showed me a lot of, this year showed me Shege. <laughs> can you translate Shege, please? <laughs> For non Nigerian viewers, translate Shege. <laughs> this, year, this year has spanked me. <laughs> spanked you, wow. But, oh, okay. <laughs> But in I a feel non sexual like, way, in an absolutely no sexual way, there was no fun in it. <laughs> but like, there was some give and take. But I feel like next year, I am going to sort of like set my booty for the year to spank, but in a different way, you know. Okay, All more right. pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Can we move on from this metaphor, please? Let's get down from this analogy. Okay, but what I mean is, this year there were a lot of um, like unforeseen events that just took away from like you plan so much and everything just goes. So next year, I think I'm more just like sort of set a little like set the explosive everywhere and kind of wait for it to blow by myself. So. There are a lot of plans. There are a lot of things I saw from this year that I could be doing, that I'm capable of doing um, in my business, in the things that I plan to do there. Uh, a lot of places I want to diversify. There, like, there are so many ideas, but I figure like this year, I kind of went in like planning as if I had control. So next year, I plan to just um, have like a set of things I want to do, a good number of things I want to do and focus on them from the beginning of the year. So even if everything goes scatter, I can always focus on those things and try and get them done. So those are, I'm trying to, this year showed me, I had like, I got kind of like tunnel vision. I focused, I started focusing on one thing, two things and trying to get them done. Meanwhile, the whole world no longer cared about those things. So um, next year I'm hoping, um, I intend to sort of like just have that wide big goal Mm. And all the things I intend to get done to get that goal accomplished. And then I just go for each and every one of them. So that's that's my next year for me, both in my business, in my career, in my one day living this country, relationship, all of that. I okay. plan to just leave it wide open and then 
go for each and every one of them. But with a lot of planning, like I think time management, the stuff you said about you could have the full day and realize that that's when the problem is there. I think that's a big problem for me. When I have so much time, it becomes a lot harder to utilize that time. So yeah, that will become a little bit more uh, microscopic about my actions. Mm. So yeah, that's that's my next year, hopefully. Okay. For me next year, I just feel like the whole maybe the vaccine comes and it's really effective and the whole world is healed. We can be able to like live a normal life again, travel because I want to travel back yeah. as bad as you don't know how bad. Then <laughs> next year, I should have to like do all the certifications that I've been doing with my mouth since 2018. <laughs> my mouth okay. this way. So the next year to not be with my mouth, to be with my hands and I'll have the paper <laughs> show mm. for it. Then my fashion business, I hope. To start next year, no procrastination. I must do it. No okay. excuses. So that's a summer collection. You guys should watch out on Yame's thoughts. You'll see it there. I will send her one. So <laughs> yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> you saw it here first. Okay, moving on. Um, Rosa, <laughs> Rosemary. Okay, so for me, um, I like to start with the fact that I don't know why everybody just thinks that once we enter January 1st, 2021 things are going to go back to normal. Of course not. Because I don't know what's giving us that idea. No, it's still going to continue like this and it will probably take a while before things normalize again. Mm. Probably be going to mid next year before things would even start to normalize. Yes, yeah, so what 2020 has taught me and which I'll be looking forward to in 2021 now is that, um, okay, so we don't have control. We don't have so much control. We don't have so much control. One thing can come and scatter your plans. So when you're making plans, you need to make plans that can actually stand, that are resilient, that can stand whatever happens. Okay, so I was just saying that I'm hoping that something happens okay and we can go back to how it used to be. I hope that organizations would learn from this and know that, uh, I mean, life doesn't have to be difficult. We can still work remotely and be productive. And then personally, um, I hope to do a number of things, business, and I also hope that I've applied to a lot of the, um, a lot of I've applied for a lot of things, schools, scholarships, and all. So I really, really hope that um, all of these things start to come true in terms of one, and um, you know, I get to be where I want to be. And um, I don't just go with the tides, but I am actually doing the things I want to do. Yeah, that was good. Okay, so one more thing. I don't know if we are all into like music, but I want to ask what was like your best album that came out this year? Nigerian music. I'm talking about Nigerian music. We had like three major albums. <laughs> yeah, like we had Bona Boy, we had Whiskey, we had David. O. I didn't listen to any of them. Wow, wow. So much for <laughs> surprise. Please count me out. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> so nobody nobody listens to nigerian music viewers nigerians I mean, behold nigerians that do not listen to nigerian I, I i listen to nigerian music but for me i think my my best album this year like the one that hit me the most was chike's album okay more than more than the big guys and all that. Was it Chike's album, album? Was like a good... Was it 2020? It had to be 2020. No, I'm 2019. Did I know Chike in 2019? No, no, it was it was definitely 2020. It was definitely okay. 2020. Okay. Yeah. What's so it was... Chike's um, album? Boo uh, of the Bullets. Yeah, Boo of the Boo Bullets. Of the Bullets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was no bad song from beginning to end, and it was just it was just a great album altogether. Mm. The other guys, great stuff, great stuff, but that one stayed with me. Yeah. Okay. So the rest of you, nothing, nothing. Adrian, you must have something for us if he if he hears us at all. No. I don't even listen personally. I don't listen to music in albums. Okay. See, I just yeah, man. To one see, I like. see? I, I listen to one song that I like. See what? what? See what? <laughs> what are you seeing? That's that's your that's your sister. That's your I sister. Saw, I saw. <laughs> <laughs> I saw. Why would you listen to an artist's I body? Always, How would you know the story I, I, that an artist is trying to tell? Yeah, 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 yeah. All of that. But you're always acting like I'm one uh what's it called? 
dwarf because I don't listen to to music yeah, now. Yeah, kind of. Dwarf. 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 You want to say what we're talking about here? Okay. Never mind that. Music snob. <laughs> Well, I feel like there were a lot of there were a lot of nice albums this year. Um, Thames was somebody I also discovered this year, although I knew her single before now, Try Me, but her album was actually nice. Or is it EP? I don't know which one. Um, then Bonaboy, obviously, Whiskey, and the rest. So they, they they Nigerians did very good for the music industry this year. So okay, since you don't listen to songs in the album, was there any particular song <laughs> you liked this year? And it must have been released this year. Or movie yes. or a series, something. It, it must have been released this year, that's what you're saying. Yes. yes. Something that got you through the year. But it must have been released this year, that's what you're saying. Oh my God. Oh yes. My God. <laughs> <laughs> you see when she, keeps asking, when she keeps asking the question, let's just move she on. She does not year. have. <laughs> I think for me, this one that be a... I think the, the artist that got me through this year was Juice World, though. Like, he was like, he's dead. He's really dead. I don't know. Yeah, he's dead. But I actually discovered his music this year. And there were some songs. It's not a 2020 album, man, is it? No, it was. There's a 2020 album that, you know, they re- released it posthumously or whatever how they, how they call it. Mm. It was really awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. So, thank you guys so much for being here. Some of you did not get snacks. Rosemary, women, I saw you guys. People did not eat, like, get snacks. You did not have snack either. You just drink from a from a mug. I had a drink. I, I mean, we don't know if it's, if it's water. Yeah, she's exactly been drinking. water. <laughs> I, exactly. Oh, <laughs> you could have been drinking water since. No, I, mean, I brought a branded cup before you could know that something. Like that. I don't That's understand. Empty. I was. It's finished now. I was <laughs> drinking something called the London Fog. Okay, Google it. Um, Caleb no, was probably the only one drinking something. Kenneth was eating at dinner. Okay. <laughs> Your point. <laughs> okay, so, really are watching their heights. Anyway, so I just want to thank you guys for the support throughout the since I, I started my YouTube channel, which was in August. So long ago. Thank you so much for the support, the reposts. Please do not relent in 2021. <laughs> I beg of you. <laughs> um, uh, thank you for coming to the pyjama party as well. And hopefully we'll also have more these conversations. I know we have some Rosemary that we're going to talk about. Um, I don't think we have anything with women scheduled, but you know, definitely more things will come up. So please be ready when I call. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> any last words for the viewers? You know, do you have anything you want people to like? Obviously, I'm going to put all your links in the description box. I'm no, I know my viewers already know you guys, but still, I'll put you, <laughs> your links in the description boxes. Any, um, is there anything you want to tell the viewers? Nothing? No? Kenneth? Anything like what? About maybe you will have something coming that you want them to watch out for or whatever. Kenneth? Yeah. Um, what I want to tell them, like 2021, regardless of the whole darkness with COVID, just be hopeful that something great will happen. And yeah, something great too. My fashion line is coming up. So that's <laughs> a great thing. Look out. Okay. Watch out from Kenneth. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Rosemary, uh, I think for me. Okay, Caleb. How are you doing? Yeah, for me, 2020 may not have been very. Seven DPTOs. Are we back to this <laughs> word? <laughs> <laughs> but 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 there were moments that everything seemed dark and then they just brightened. Mm-hmm. Like so I think for 2021, like people should just learn to live and let live. When it's there, flex it. When it's not there, chill. And then Watch out for me. There's gonna be a lot of nudity next year. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> There's going to be a lot of nudity next year. I have a full series planned out. I have a lot of models that have already modeled for me. I have documentaries coming up. 2021, I'm gonna be like all crazy. So you can watch out for that too. Okay. A lot of nudity. All right, from Caleb. 
uh, <laughs> roommate. <laughs> <laughs> he's a new uh what's the word now new artist i think he's a new artist and a new dist so oh, is he a new dist in nigeria <laughs> I, mean, I know right nigeria. are you sure he's a new I nigeria right up in the near psychiatric hospital <laughs> that's <laughs> straight please let's not try that <laughs> no, i don't think i'm really being needed to nigeria anyway um aspiring Yes, let's go. Relation is mind mainly. Um, like something that told me that you have to celebrate the small victories, no matter how small you think they are, right? Mm-hmm. I think we, I don't know about other people, me, I know I'm very hard on myself. So 2020 has taught me to just like just chill, like celebrate the small, no matter how small the victories are, just celebrate them. Because no matter how you think your life is not where it should be. It's better than where it was, hopefully. And there are people that would give an arm or a leg to be where you are. So it just taught me to be more grateful and just basically count the victories and count the blessings every single day. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Rosemary, do you have anything to add? Okay. I just want to say thank you guys uh, for watching all through 2020 and keep watching of course watch out for um, me as well um on my blog a lot will be coming out and i'm thinking of going into f- something fashion related for teens as well so just just watch out just watch out. yeah for teens okay nice you know yeah and just watch out. we should do a collab all right adrian <laughs> <We should. laughs> adrian are you with us now uh, i am I heard everybody talking about 2020 and how and how and, and what it was like. Well, I think like 2020 has come and it's almost over. So we'll, I hope for about 2021. Mm. So um, I, I just I, in the summary of everything is I think 2020 has taught us a lot of lessons and we should appreciate. Um, like I think it was women that said appreciate the little things and mm. that's what I would like to go by as well because a lot has happened. And basically, appreciating the little things is what, what counts the most. So I, I, I guess also, uh, 2020, um, the 052 podcast, we are expecting to launch like fully. This year was just like a test run. So 2020, 2021, sorry, we're expecting to launch fully. So I guess you watch out for us as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. For me, final words, um, guys, I was really very you know uh, very careful about mental health this year like 2020 actually brought out a lot of issues in terms of mental health so guys take care of yourself and stop thinking that you know people must check up on you if you don't want to check up on anybody just chill but don't expect it in return everybody's going to be out <laughs> let's just stop this 2020 in 2021 oh this person did not check up on me forget about that <laughs> nobody cares <laughs> um yeah um so guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe tell us your take on this particular pajama party maybe next time we'll, you know play some music and stuff um um yeah all their links are going to be in the description box i don't know can they ask refuse to join instagram so um, okay, I'll do. <laughs> maybe when she launches she would finally launch on instagram so thank you so much for coming out from your schedule all of you some of you are not even at home adrian is in transit so thank you so much for still joining us today and hopefully i will see you guys in the next video bye 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 happy holidays bye everyone happy holidays Bye. Bye.